This video is the first in our series of getting started with ARM Design Start Cortex M for Xilinx FPGA development boards. Starting with this first video, you need to follow the steps in each video before moving on to the next one. At the end of this series, you'll be ready to develop and test your own Cortex M designs. In this video, we're going to connect our FPGA board to a Windows machine. Then we're going to upload a Cortex M processor design to the board and check that the board works as we expect it to. So after you've done this and your board is working as expected, you'll be ready to download and install all of the third party packages so that you can then start modifying and debugging a design. And this is all shown through the videos in this series. So before we start, you'll need to download and extract the ARM Design Start Cortex M package from the ARM developer website. When you extract the contents to your local machine, make sure that there are no spaces in the installation path, otherwise you'll come into issues later on. Here we'll be using the M1 design, but you can follow all the steps in these videos for other Cortex M processors. You'll also need to have Xilinx Vivado Design Suite version 2018.2 or later installed. In these videos, we're using the HL System Edition, but you can also use the Webpack Edition. You'll also need a terminal program such as TerraTerm or PuTTY. So let's start by connecting the FPGA board to your computer. It's a straightforward USB connection and when you plug it in, you should see the lights on the board come on. And with the board connected, we now need to find out which port number it's using. So one way to do this is to open your device manager and check the serial port. So here under ports, we can see that our board is connected using COM11 but this could be a different port number on your machine. So now, open your terminal program and check the preferences. In here, you need to set the port value to the one that's being used by your board. So in our case, we change the default value to COM11. You also need to ensure that the connection speed is set to 115,200 with 8-bit values, one stop and no parity. If these aren't set correctly, you'll see the terminal window return random values which won't let us know if the board is doing what we want it to. Now let's open the terminal, which shows a blank screen. We need to reboot the board by pressing the top left hand button, and now we can see the banner message from the board. This message is from the Digilent image, which comes shipped on the board, stored in its flash memory. Now you might see some random text showing in the message, and if we press the top left hand button again, we reboot the board, and here we can see the banner message in full. So let's think about what we've just done. The FPGA has an internal RAM memory that stores the current programmed image and the board also has a separate flash memory. When you power the board on or when you press the left hand button labeled PROG as we've just done, the image in the flash memory is automatically loaded into the FPGA RAM. This contains the processor design and the software. Pressing the right hand button labeled RESET only performs a soft reset of the processor design, which restarts the software. You can reset the board from either of these memory locations using the two buttons at the top. And now we're going to see how to load an image file into each of these locations. So we'll start by connecting to the board through Vivado, and then we'll download ARM's Design Start Cortex M image to the internal memory. So open Vivado, and from the menu bar, select Flow and then open Hardware Manager. In here, select Open Target, then Auto Connect. Now we can see the device in the left hand panel. And we right click on the chip, beginning with XC7 for the RT7, and select Program Device. In this window, you need to select the bitstream file to download to the board. So click here and then navigate to the directory where you extracted the design start package. Open the folder called Hardware. In here, you want to go to the folder for the Cortex-M core and the board, which in our example is M1 for RTA7, as we're using the Cortex-M1 processor and the RTA7 board. And then we open M1 for RTA7 again, and then select the reference.bit file. Click OK. Leave the second dialog box blank as there isn't a debug core in the example design. And then select Program to upload the file to the board. And the terminal window updates to show the banner message from the included test software, which is part of the Cortex-M design. 
Note that there are some warnings in the Vivado console. But these are just warning us that we haven't got a debug core in the design, which we already know. At this point, you can test that the image is uploaded properly, as the design has been programmed so that if you toggle the buttons and switches on the bottom of the board, you should see the LEDs respond like this. Remember that if you press the left hand button or power cycle the board, this image will be overwritten as you didn't store it in the flash. But there are likely to be times where you want to have the ARM image in the flash, such as when you want to use the board standalone rather than programming it every time. So here we'll see how to do that. First, we need to add the flash device in Vivado. So let's right click on the chip again and select Add Configuration Memory Device. In the search box, type in MT25 and then select MT25 QL128 from the results. Click OK. This tells Vivado that there is a flash device on the board. Then click OK here as we now want to program to the flash memory. Now we need to select which file to upload to the board. So if you select here to browse for a configuration file, Vivado should open the same directory from before when we uploaded the bitstream file. Here, the file you upload to Flash is the processor and board reference.mcs file. And for our example, we want the M1 for RTA7 file. Click OK, and then OK again to upload the ARM image to Flash, which may take around a minute or so to complete. So let's confirm that the Cortex M1 image has uploaded to the Flash by pushing the PROG button on the top left of the board, and we can see that the ARM image loads instead of the Digilent one. So now the ARM Cortex M image will also load if we unplug the board and then power it back on. And again, you can test this on the board by toggling the LEDs. So to summarize, what we've shown here is how to upload the Cortex M example processor design to the internal memory, and we've also shown how to upload it to the flash memory.